I, I think what you had predicted was by the end of this year, 2018, the whole the whole of Bitcoin that it would be produ- it would be using something like a half a percent of the world's energy, uh, electric energy, something like 0.5 percent of the entire energy that's being used up in the world is being used for Bitcoin mining and transactions. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. And uh, there's a few ways to look at at the number. So um, one one of the things you can do to get an estimate of energy consumption is something like I just did, right? You can um, you can have a look at what's the total computational power in the network, and you can go into the market and check. Okay, what are the machines available for mining at this time? Um, we know what their advertised performance is. We know their advertised energy use. So if we just take like the most efficient one uh, and we divide, let's say, the total computational power by the computational power of, of, of one of those machines, um, we first of all get a number of how many machines there are in the network. That's why I just said like, okay, around 4 million machines. And we can multiply that with their energy use and then you can get a, a energy use estimate, which is not accurate, but it's a start, right? If you apply this method, you sort of get like a minimum number. Uh, <laughs> one thing people often forget is that one single mining machine uses around 1500 watts of electricity all that gets converted to heat uh, if you're putting 20,000 of those machines into a single facility it's going to be hotter than a sauna so you need to get rid of all that heat uh, to cool your chips and so there's a lot of cooling involved um, that cooling requires energy as well uh, so if you if you do the approach I just said, then you're going to your estimate is going to fall short. So I personally took things in a little bit different way. Uh, by the way, I should mention that if you do the approach I just mentioned, you find that the whole network consumes around 46 terawatt hours of electricity per year, which is really like the bottom line at this time. Um, and comparable, it's not that far from, let's say, a country like Singapore or Portugal because they do around 50 terawatt hours of electricity per year. Um, and that's the, and that's, and again, that's the very, very minimum. Um, I personally took things from an economic perspective, so I was kind of interested in um, in looking forward. Uh, by the time I was doing my studies, the price of Bitcoin was still significantly higher than, uh, let's say, several months before, despite the crash. Um, And I wondered, okay, to what point is this number going to be growing? Um, One thing we can do is we we know how much income all these miners are earning. So we can just take the amount of blocks that have been mined, uh, multiply it with um, well, the reward that has been paid in those blocks. Uh, so, twelve and a half coins per block. There's also some fees you should account for, but let's 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 not include those uh, for now. Uh, and then times the price, because ultimately the electricity is stay, still paid in dollars, right? So, if you want to know profitability, it's going to be uh, the, the USD value matters a lot, or local currency value, and you can you find if you do that that well if you do it today the miners were are earning uh, roughly two and a half billion annualized <clears throat> that's the total income available to miners at this time I think uh, back then it was a little bit higher uh, and one thing we learned from economics like general economics is that um, it should roughly cost a bitcoin to create a bitcoin. Right, so all yeah. that money should be practically used for creating bitcoins. Uh, if not, it's well, it's obviously profitable to either add more machines or you should be removing machines from, uh, depending on what side you're on. <clears throat> so I went to look for that equilibrium point. I kind of did some research in case if we reach an equilibrium, what's going to be the energy expense at that point? I realized that, okay, then it's going to be around. 60% of the total uh, expenses at the time, right? There's also capital expenses. Um, yeah, miners are constantly making the decision to uh, invest in new machines and stuff like that. <clears throat> and 
the only thing that is left once you have that equilibrium is to figure out okay how long is it going to pro- to yeah, to take to actually produce the amount of machines required to reach that equilibrium which at the time uh, I had some numbers on how many uh, machines Bitmain and the biggest producer of these mining machines could be producing so when my research published, uh, I could estimate, okay, this is going to be the equilibrium, uh, roughly the size of Austria. And it's going to take up until the end of the year for production can actually produce that many machines. Or at least the second half of the year. Um, uh, and my, my, my energy index, the one that's featured on my uh, by blog, digeconomist.net, is featuring this methodology, using this methodology on a daily basis to reflect a, well, a daily estimate, um, which is currently uh, a lot less. So if we look at it from an economic perspective, uh, I would estimate that the whole network uses about 52 terawatt hours of electricity per year, which is not a lot more than the minimum number I just mentioned. Right, I just said 46. Uh, economically speaking, it's 52, so that's a whole long story for <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. a little bit more. Uh, the the difference was bigger recently, but the, let's say the recent price crash has really squeezed the miners. Um, and if that happens, you will kind of see those those two different methods. They will they will converge to pretty much the same result. So that's what's going on at this time. Um, which is very recent, right? So if we talk um, not even two weeks ago, (laughs) uh, estimates were a little bit higher uh, with with the economic estimate at, let's say, 73 terawatt hours of electricity per year and a minimum at around 60. So things have been falling really fast, rapidly um, over the past few weeks. 